So welcome to Cooking Fun with Joanna. I am Joanna Hodorowska, your host, and I am the owner of Nutrition in Motion, a holistic nutrition uh, coaching company where we help unravel whatever health issue you have, be it pain, fatigue, or GI distress, and help you feel better quickly, all with natural methods. So today we are going to be cooking fun and we're going to the world of Africa and making some grilled, um, it's not necessarily grilled chicken because we're not sticking it on the grill, but this is something you could do in, on the grill in the, uh, in the summer months. Um, but we're gonna be marinating some chicken in, in garlic, ginger, we're adding turmeric because that's gonna make it more anti-inflammatory, uh, anise seeds, saffron, paprika, cayenne pepper. If you like cayenne pepper, I do not. So I'm going to do ancho pepper, lemon juice, cilantro or parsley, depending on whether you like cilantro and parsley. Uh, I'm going to use leeks instead of green onions. And then olive oil, ground pepper, and obviously chicken and some salt. Uh, and then the side, we're going to be making... Uh, a cauliflower medley, and it's really just going to be onions, some spices, and the cauliflower cubed. And we're going to make that while we're marinating. We're at least going to start chopping that up while we're marinating the chicken. So we're going to start off with, you're going to grab a bowl. And I think the first thing you want to do is you're going to peel the garlic. And we're going to do four garlic cloves. And if you don't have if you don't have green onions or leeks, an onion is always an option as well. So never fear. There's always an option for whatever it is that we're making. So this recipe calls for four cloves of garlic, and you're going to mince these if you don't have a garlic press. And because I have a garlic press, I'm going to use that because I can. So you're going to peel the garlic as best you can. And because I've been doing this for years, I can handle a big knife rather easily. So I'm gonna peel that, that garlic skin off. And then I am going to use my handy dandy garlic press. No, that's not the garlic press. Garlic press. And I'm gonna put that into the bowl. We're also going to be putting in um, about a one inch piece of ginger and turmeric. If you don't have the turmeric, you can just use more ginger. I actually have turmeric powder. And you can use a teaspoon of turmeric powder. There's, like I said, there's always a way of working with this. So if you don't have an ingredient, we will find a substitute for you. And because the four garlic cloves, it's going to take a little while to do each one separately. Have you, has anybody had Algerian food before? No. I've yeah. had Ethiopian, but not Algerian. So, but it's still, I, I, I would still consider it kind of Mediterranean in a way. And I have this tendency to want to chop the garlic, but... When you have a garlic press, you don't have to chop. But since we're creatures of habit, it becomes a challenge. I'm here. <laughs> Hi. Hello. So we're just peeling the garlic right now. And if you have a garlic press like I do, because I did end up getting that from uh, when my friend was having her pampered chef party. I said, oh, that's something I haven't had in a long time. And when we were kids, I don't know if I ever told you this, but when we were kids, we would take the garlic press that my mom had. We would take a fresh slice of rye bread that always had caraway seeds in it, slather it with butter. And then at one point, I think we put three garlic cloves on that one piece of, you know, one teeny piece of cocktail rye with butter, put some salt on it, and then we ate it and we, we kept trying to see how, mu how much more we could get away with. But I got to tell you, the garlic made your head explode. 
<laughs> and but the funny thing is that we actually really enjoyed it. So we did it for like a whole afternoon, and I, I don't think we just did it the one time. We did it a couple of times, and I still remember like the funny things you do when you're a kid. How many garlic cloves can you eat? Three. So yeah, with the garlic cloves, you chop off that that end or the base of it, and then take the um, the tail, pull that off, and sometimes the skin comes off easily. Otherwise, you have to kind of scrape your knife across it. So anybody else have any garlic stories like that? Not really. You guys, you, you, got, you guys got to try it sometime, you know, stick some garlic. Now, when I tell people to eat, you know, eat raw garlic for boosting their immune system, because, you know, honestly, it'll totally kill like two thirds of the things that you have. But it, in the raw version, it really is um, majorly antiviral. Um, but it totally clears out your sinuses, clears out your head, clears out everything. I and suggest to put it into cooked beans. So you can either put it, it, chop it up and put it onto, you know, pinto beans, baked beans, hummus, but anything, lentils, anything that's basically just cooked beans. Make sense? Yep. And that yeah, somehow gonna... takes the fire yeah. out of the, out of the, the garlic. And that fire isn't necessarily a bad thing except for your palate. So we're going to get four cloves of garlic. We're putting it in the bowl. This is what it looks like. And then I don't know if you've got saffron, but I have a whole box of saffron. I'll share it with you if you come over. But you want to put in, um, well, if I can open the container, I can put some in. But you want to take, you want to take a, um, a pinch or two of the saffron and put that also into the in with the garlic. Next, we're going to chop up the ginger and the turmeric. And if you're, I don't know if you can actually put this into a garlic press. That would be kind of a cool thing. So I'm going to experiment because I can. But I don't, I don't know if you can actually put um, ginger into a garlic press and have it ooze out the other end. So here's my experiment. Oh, it does work. So if you have a garlic press, you can put the, put the ginger into it, and maybe even the turmeric too. Who knew? It's a multifaceted tool. The challenge is getting the, the, the squished piece of uh, ginger out of the out of the container. But you're gonna do. I have I have a really thick piece of ginger. So if it says it, to do an inch, I'm only gonna do a half inch of this. And you want definitely an inch, a good inch. And because I like ginger, I think I'll do a little bit more. But I'm gonna cut this in half and then put that in the garlic press and then do the same thing with the turmeric, because I'm gonna make an assumption that turmeric can go through a garlic press too. And if you're not doing the garlic press, you wanna basically dice it really finely. And note to self, don't put so much ginger in because you can't smush it. Unless I go to the gym and start doing different kind of exercises than I have been doing. But it definitely squeezes out the, the ginger and the juice. So this is the fun part where you get to play with your food. We haven't even gotten to the other fun part. So if you're not doing what I'm doing, then you're you're basically dicing the ginger and the turmeric finely and putting it into the bowl. Okay? Yeah. And note to self, if you're using a garlic press, just do one 
half inch piece of ginger at a time. Otherwise it's too thick. But I think the combination of the garlic and the ginger will clear your sinuses just standing over it. So now we're going to do the turmeric and it's going to be the same thing where if you put it in the garlic press you want just smaller pieces not big hunks like I did with the with the ginger Let's see if this works. Otherwise, I'm going to be chopping it up just like everybody else. The hard part is that I need leverage and I only have my hand. And now my hand's getting sore. So I'm going to just use the, use my body weight. All right. Note to self. The turmeric is harder to push through the the garlic press. So don't do that. It's going to be really hard. It was a good idea until it didn't work very well. So I'm going to go ahead and chop up my, my turmeric. I'm going to move this over so you can actually see me doing it. I'm going to dice it into tiny, tiny pieces, as small as I can get them. And then put that all into that bowl. And then we're going to add two teaspoons of paprika or one and a half teaspoons of paprika. Does that go in the bowl? That goes in the bowl. Where did my paprika go? Yeah, we're going to be adding uh, lemon juice to this too. There's a one teaspoon and a bit of the paprika. We're gonna do one tablespoon of anise seeds, which are also as fennel seeds. And you're also gonna use some of the fennel seeds for the cauliflower when we get to that. And then you're going to do one third of a cup of lemon juice. And I'm going to use just the Santa Cruz organic lemon juice. So one third cup. And you're going to mix that all together. And I would use a fork to mix it all together rather than a spoon. You can kind of whisk it. And you can also put the, um, we're going to put the greens, so either the spring onions and um, some of the leek into this. and a teeny bit of olive oil. And then we're gonna chop up the chicken and put that in here and then switch to the cauliflower. Got it? Yep. Yeah. All right, so that's all kind of whisked together. I'm gonna chop off the head part of the leeks. I'm gonna cut it in half right down the middle because I still had the leeks. 
And I'm gonna just chop it up into two pieces like that and then slice them into like quarter inch pieces. And I'm gonna put half of, or a third of this into this, um, into this marinade. And then the rest I'm gonna save for the cauliflower and for the pan. But I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the whole leek. Are you cutting the chicken up into dices or? Chicken is gonna be, you can either do it in dices or in slices, like three quarter inch um, pieces like you would for stir fry. But let me get, let me finish with the, you're getting me to think about the chicken and I haven't finished with cutting the leeks. So we're gonna put the onions into, into there. And then I'm actually gonna put the, half of those onions or the leeks into each of the pans. And I'm not turning them on yet, but I'm just putting the onion there. I might cut half an onion into the, uh, the cauliflower just because it'll give it some extra flavor. Uh, I'm trying to see what else am I missing. Uh, oh, olive oil. So we need uh, two tablespoons of olive oil in this little mixture. Make it three. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that um, that chicken, chop it up, and put it into that marinade. Okay. I'm gonna grab my chicken and hope that it somewhat defrosts it. I'm not sure it did. I forgot to defrost the chicken. <laughs> I went grocery shopping and forgot. But we're gonna cut this into uh, into these. What is it like three quarter inch slices? Yeah, that's really almost hard. like you would for um, for a stir fry. And if it's a really wide piece, you kind of want them to be an inch and a half or two long. So you'll want to cut them the other way too, so that they're basically one inch, one and a half inch strips. So here's my other piece of chicken. So now what you're gonna do, I, I just cut up two, two chicken breasts. I'm actually gonna do, I think all three, but you're gonna stir that into, into that bowl and make sure that everything is covered with the sauce or with the marinade. And I'm gonna cut my third turkey or chicken breast. And just so an FYI, if you ever get into a pickle and you have forgotten to defrost your, your, um, your meat and your protein, you can stick it into a pot with warm water. You don't want hot water and not necessarily cold, but that actually defrosts it fairly quickly. So these were completely frozen uh, pieces of chicken breast. And I took them out at 3.30 or four o'clock and now it's six. And typically if I just took them out, they would just be still frozen. So there's a, there's a little trick that you have that you can use for for future for when you need something defrosted fairly quickly, stick it in and uh, stick the baggie into a pot of warm or just warm water, not hot, not cold, and it will defrost. So now I have to cut the, I have to wash my, my cutting board because it's got chicken on it. And I still want to put together. Maybe. 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 Ma
Going to the cabinet, the cabinet. So while that chicken is cooking, I mean marinating, we are going to go ahead and start with getting the, um, the cauliflower ready. So with the cauliflower, what we're going to do is we're going to chop it up. And depending on how many people you're trying to feed, you can either use the whole head, you could use just cauliflower rice. That would be if you have that. Then we're just going to dice it. So we're going to cut the cut the plastic off. I'm going to sharpen my knife. The more you cook, the more you have to sharpen your knife. And so I'm going to first cut this head in half with my big butcher knife. And then I'm going to chop the, cut a big triangle into the base so that we can take that center stuff out. And throw that off to the side. And then you can flip that cauliflower and there's many ways to do this, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a hold of it with my with my hands and kind of cut it into these oblong edges. And then I'm gonna turn it on its side. And then I'm gonna turn the cutting board is what I'm gonna do. Turn the cutting board and then try to chop it downward. And then there's, there's going to be a third chop to make them into cubes. Because right now they're still going to be long pieces. So you're trying to make them into like half inch cubes. All right. So sometimes you have to just grab the, the end and just dice that and make it a little smaller. So now, if you haven't turned on your pan, turn on the pan, the, the one that you're gonna put the cauliflower into and put some of the butter and, uh, and olive oil into it. So we're gonna caramelize this first. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna put a, a teaspoon of the acid seeds in here as well right from the beginning. Thank you. Oh, I didn't put the aniseeds in. Here I'm telling you to put the aniseeds and I haven't done it yet. What kind of chef I am, right? Do as I say, but don't do as I do. So here we're going to put the anise seed into dish. If you want to add some fennel, you can add that into it. I mean, some uh, caraway seeds. That would also be a good thing to add. Shake a few of them in there. Now put in the cauliflower. And if you find a big chunk like this one in here, then you gotta take it out. And so I'm going to put that from some onion to go into this as well, just because I feel like I need more than more flavor from caramelized onions. So I'm going to take half of an onion, rip this in, chop the end off. 
feel that the outer two layers, make sure that that's, that almost invisible membrane is peeled off. Otherwise it makes it hard to cut. And then you can just, I'm just gonna cut it into thirds. And cut it into a quarter inch or eighth inch slices. So it's not dice, but it's not half moons either. Kind of in between. And then add that into the cauliflower. And I'm going to cut another third of that cauliflower. Or maybe, maybe I call this a quarter of a head. And then you just dice it and you should hear it starting to sizzle a bit, which is a good thing. We're going to try to brown this a little bit, which means that we're not going to stir it very often. So go ahead and put the rest of your cauliflower into the, into the pan. And with the wooden spoon, you can mix the whole thing together. You just kind of blend it off. I'm actually going to switch the other one. So now I'll go ahead and just mix everything together. Because the oil is probably only on some of them, and you want want a little bit more of that oil on all the pieces so that they caramelize. So we're just going to leave this here for three or four minutes. Let it kind of brown and caramelize. I'm going to keep pushing on. I can see big pieces. I don't make them smaller, otherwise they'll take too long to cook. And we're going to add chicken. We're going to add some vegetable broth to it in a little bit, so that it will steam itself cooked all the way or the rest of the way. Everybody following along so far? Yeah. Yep. I'm going to add a little bit of ghee into this one just because sometimes that adds a little flavor. Mm -hmm. Now, and I have a pourable ghee, which I had to put in a, a pouring spout just so I could pour it. So we're going to let this in here for a minute. We've got that cooking. You're now heating up the other pan for the chicken. Okay. And you want that on medium high heat. I'm high if you're on a, on a regular electric stove versus a gas stove. The gas stove. You want it on medium to medium low. And I'm going to mix this up again. I'm going to mix the chicken just to make sure that everything's kind of blended. But what we're going to do is we're going to pour that whole thing of marinated chicken into the heated pan. We're going to let some of these uh, meat and scallions kind of start to sizzle and brown a bit before I put in the, uh, the rest of it. But I'm gonna pour all of it in. Now I can, I can smell the anise and the 
in the cauliflower. Yeah. Now I go ahead and mix that again. You should start seeing some of it getting browned and caramelized. We just want to get more of it browned and caramelized to give it some really good flavor. And then we're going to pour some broth into it in about five to ten minutes and then let it kind of steam cook its way the rest of the way. So we're going to cook it. Okay? And we probably can put the salt and pepper in now because we didn't put the salt in before. And now I think the scallions are ready. If your, if your pan is all heated up and your scallions are kind of frying, frying along nicely, go ahead and take the chicken out and put that into the pan. Okay. You are going to put all the sauce into, into it as well. So if you want to just do a, as I call it, a, if you want to just dump everything out in the bowl right into the pan, you can, rather than fishing out at this time. But try to get them to be uh, all level on the pan. And if you need to turn the heat up, go ahead, because we want to brown a little, we want to cook at a reasonable amount. Okay, just that, and that's it. You're going to scoop out all the insides and pour it all over the, the rest of the chicken. Hold on to this fork because I think I'm going to use it again to flip the chicken. If I get another fork dirty, I can use this thing on. Mm -hmm. How's everybody coming along? Good so far. So this is this is what my cauliflower looks like. If I go turn the light on, you can see better. That's the cauliflower. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and stir it one more time. And this is, this is really how you want it to be, a little browned at the bottom. So stir it one more time. And then I'm going to pour in the, like a, not even a, probably a quarter cup of chicken broth or vegetable broth. And then I'm going to cover it. And it's just enough to get it to steam the rest, steam the rest of the way. Make sense? So now I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. So that's what it looks like. So it's just a little bit of, of liquid covering the whole bottom. And then you're going to cover it. And then this is what the, uh, the chicken looks like. So it should be bubbling fairly well and cooking. And make sure it's the pan is on the center of the burner. Otherwise, you'll have one side cooking and the other side waiting to be cooked. Well, we're just going to leave this for a little bit, let a little bit of that liquid um, evaporate. And then we're going to flip it. And then we're going to probably put a lid on that one too. Not meaning put a lid on it to shut it up, but put a lid on it so that it cooks faster. How's everybody's turning out so far? Good. So you can put this stock in there. So 
If you can see my chicken now is starting to get a little bit whiter on the edges. That's what you're that's what you want to see. So once that is coming around the top of the top edge of your chicken, that's when you'll know that it's time to flip it. And because I have more white edges on this side than that, I'm going to move some of these pieces over to that side of the, the pan. Got it? Flip my chicken. And then once you flip it, once you flip the chicken, I want you to actually cover it. Okay. It is starting to smell really good in this house. How's how's it smelling over where you are? Really good. All right. So now I want you to take a take a lid and cover the chicken as well. Turn the heat down a little bit so it's it's kind of simmers rather than bubbles uncontrollably. And make sure the lid fits. Because as you saw right there, I didn't have it snugly on. So if you don't have it snugly on, all those vapors will escape. They won't have the pressure cooking like you wanted. Joanna, what do we do with the tomato paste and the paprika? The paprika was supposed to go in the chicken. The tomato paste, we're going to add a little bit of that into the into the cauliflower. Oh, okay. And it's really like a teaspoon. It's not even that much. Probably do it now because it's, it's still got that liquid in it. But now's the time to actually put the tomato paste in, into the. And I, I got this great. It's a tube of, of tomato paste. So if you ever want tomato paste and, and not go old and not have to throw out the whole thing because you only used a teaspoon and the rest went rotten, there's this Delalo Italian tomato paste. And you can get it and it stores in the refrigerator and it is the greatest thing that you can just use it and um, put it back in the refrigerator and it's, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, it's like See, and I think I can actually put a little bit more broth into my, into my... <clears throat> Okay. <laughs> if, it, if, you, if your broth has all evaporated from the cauliflower, go ahead and put a little bit more in and then stir in that, um, that tomato paste. Because without that liquid, it doesn't really stir very well. That's my problem. I have to erase the fire. I need to turn this down. Come baby. So this is kind of based on one of the recipes that I grew up with um, that my mom made with cabbage. And it's just that tomato paste is just enough to give it a little bit of flavor. But it was always onions and cabbage with the caraway seeds. I added anise seeds a couple of weeks ago and I was like, oh my God, this is so good. And it's very easy and it's an anti-inflammatory. It helps with, you know, because it's a cruciferous vegetable, 
It also helps with um, balancing out estrogen levels, hormone levels. Um, it has some of the MSM, which in the sulfur compounds, which are also anti-inflammatory. So, and that's why we added the turmeric in with the other dish because we wanted it to be anti-inflammatory. So now, is there any other ingredients that you don't know what to do with? Because <laughs> <laughs> you know, sometimes I forget to, I, I just go off on my automatic mode. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, well, we're not using that. <laughs> so you'll be happy to know that there was actually a reason for you to have tomato sauce. So that means I'm going to take the lid off of the chicken. Take out what, what it's doing. And I'm going to actually let it let it kind of simmer with the lid off so that some of this liquid evaporates. And then once this evaporates, just a, a thickens a little bit, which will be probably five minutes, the cauliflower should be ready too. And then we can have dinner. Steve, did you know that last time when you were you were out of town? I stayed on with with um, with Gina yeah. and we had dinner together. Yeah, her. Yeah, it was nice. It was just That's the two nice. of us. So thanks for going out of town. Well, I wasn't out of town. I, I he was working. Out. You were working. Oh, I had to work. Oh, okay. You were out of the house. We'll we'll leave it at that. I mean, I missed you, but I had an opportunity to have dinner with with Gina, so that was nice. And then I didn't have to eat alone, and neither did she. Yeah, which was nice. <laughs> it was very nice. Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and get my plate. I'm going to show you one last minute. I'm going to turn my cauliflower off. I'm going to show you what mine looks like. And yours should look like that. There shouldn't be any liquid left on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. There shouldn't be any liquid left on the bottom. I know it's steaming like crazy, but that's what it should look like. And then... This chicken should be about ready with that liquid a little bit less um, liquidy once I go ahead and get my plate because I'm going to make sure that it's, I'm just going to take my time getting my plate. When we get there, I need it to. Oh, you know what? I think I'm going to put this in a bowl. I'm not going to be like fancy, Miss Fancy Pants today. I'm just going to do a bowl. So I am going to take some of my cauliflower, put that on the pan, I mean on my pan, off the pan and into my bowl. And I'm going to take a few pieces of the chicken. And I think I need a regular spoon, a regular spoon to be able to grab some of that extra sauce. And the only downside to this dish right now that I can see is that it's kind of bland looking on the plate. How's yours look? I mean, that looks kind of bland. Like, where's the, where's the chicken and where's the cauliflower? <laughs> it all looks the same. But just because it looks that way doesn't necessarily mean it tastes bad. It's, a, it's just one of those, it's not quite what I expected. So is anybody else ready to eat or just me? Yeah, mine's nowhere near ready. There's oh, boo. Nowhere near? There's mine. I made a lot of chicken. Oh, right. My cauliflower is ready. 
The call for well, so the chicken shouldn't be too far behind. Yeah, it should only be about five minutes. Yeah. But I want to see how yours tastes in comparison to mine. So now it's time to do the almighty taste test. And mine's steaming like crazy, so it's hot. So I think I'll take a small piece of chicken and a small piece of cauliflower, blow on it. Mmm. 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 Chicken's good. It's very lemony. Steve, somehow you're upside down on the camera now. Oh, I don't know why. Mm. But you turned it and you made yourself upside down. That's all right. There you are. So it's a nice, it's a very nice combination, the two together. Yeah, I actually tasted it. It's very good. Yeah. Nice and I think the, the lemony chicken goes nicely with the the spicy garlicky um, cauliflower. I would definitely make it again. Maybe with a few bit less lemon juice. Mm. But it is really, really tasty. Now you're probably wondering what our next uh, extravaganza is going to be, right? Well, that is good. Right. Actually, I don't know what our next extravaganza is because it's in the magazine that's in the other room. But I found a couple of things that were vegan. So we're going to make something vegan next time. Uh -oh. you know, once in a while, we have to be vegan. Because you can always add meat to anything that's vegan. But to find good vegan recipes, I find it to be a little challenging. So we're going to do a vegan dish next time. Um, but like I said, I've got it in a different, um, oh, I forgot to, you were supposed to put parsley as a garnish. No. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I had a casserole that I had a recipe for and it had, you know, ham and chicken and stuff in it. And I just made it all vegetarian. Cause then I figured then I could add whatever protein I want to add on the side to it. And I could right. add whatever, you know, whatever I wanted to it then. Yeah, and that's sometimes you know the, I think the, the the bigger challenge isn't the isn't the the animal protein. I think the challenge is finding fun recipes for vegan stuff because you can always add um, exactly. protein to it always. So we're gonna do something totally vegan next time, and if you want to add some animal proteins, you can. So that's gonna be what April third. It's the first uh, Tuesday of April. I think it's the third. Uh, no, Easter, it would be the sixth because Easter is the fourth. Okay, so it'll be April 6th. April yeah. 6th, our next cooking from with Joanna. And that's me. So we'll see you then. Enjoy your dinner. Let us know how it works. Comment below. And we will see you in two weeks. All right, All right. thank you. Thanks. Thank you.